Way back in January of 2017, I bought this Jet 16-32 drum sander. At $1,300, it was the first substantial purchase I made for my shop. At the time, I was making lots of end grain cutting boards, and if you've ever made one of those, you know the biggest challenge is getting them flat and smooth. That was my main justification for picking this thing up, to help me reduce production time on cutting boards. Over five years later, I rarely make cutting boards anymore, but I still use this tool almost daily. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of this particular drum sander and make a few upgrades and repairs while we're at it. What I consider the only real design flaw with this tool is the stand it sits on. It comes with holes pre-drilled in the feet so you can add wheels and make it mobile. I went this route when I initially set it up, and within the first week of use, I was pulling it into position and accidentally tried to roll it over an extension cord, which bent the flimsy metal foot inward, dropping one leg, and nearly tipped the top heavy tool down on top of myself. After that happened, I built a support frame and shelf to give those feet some extra strength, but it was never quite enough, and I just learned how to be more careful in rolling it around my uneven shop floor. You can see I used cheap wheels, which added to the problem, and now it's time for a major strength and mobility upgrade. I straightened the feet the best that I could, then started building a new mobile cart that the entire tool will sit on. Using 2x4s for the frame and 3 quarter inch plywood for the base, this new cart will be rock solid. This time, I also used bigger, stronger casters attached to the bottom to keep this thing rolling smoothly. Even though the sander has good dust collection, there are tons of nooks and crannies where years of dust has collected and it's time to vacuum it all out. Up until now, I've been buying the Jet branded pre-cut sandpaper strips off of Amazon. I figured the manufacturer would have to know what was best suited for the machine, so I've stuck with it. Man was I wrong, but I'll get to that a little later. While I was in the process of cleaning and fixing things, I took the cover off the bottom of the control panel so I could re-secure this electrical fitting that came loose years ago. With everything cleaned up, I heaved the sander back onto the base and tightened the bolts. <laughs> This is the second conveyor belt I've had on this thing. Over the years, it just got a little beat up and eventually ripped right down the seam. It left me a little high and dry when it happened, so I picked up two when I replaced it. That way, if it happens again, I'll be back up and running without having to wait for a delivery. Occasionally, this thing just gets off track, so I just recenter it and adjust the left and right tension so it's running in the center again. The other important thing to check once in a while is if the drum is running perfectly parallel to the bed. The convenience of a cantilever design does allow for this to get out of whack once in a while, and if that happens, you can end up with material that has a slightly different thickness across its width. To fix it, I like to use a 1-2-3 block and set it under the inside end, then slowly lower the drum until it just kisses it. Then, I move it to the outside end and adjust the elevation screw until it also just barely makes contact. I have the roller clamped up out of the way just so we can see this better. I'm sure all of these little pockets in the frame are there for strength and weight savings, but as we saw, they collect a lot of dust, which doesn't really hurt anything, it just bugs me. So I used some extra wide electrical tape to cover them up, and so far it's been doing a really good job of keeping the machine looking cleaner overall. The nozzle on my dust collection hose doesn't quite fit the port on the top of the machine, so initially I just wrapped it with tape until it was snug. Again, it works, but it's ugly. So I cut that mess away and attached a dust boot from Rockler that fits a little better. The middle storage shelf in the frame of this tool is handy, but it leaves something to be desired. It's just flat and open, so it gathers a lot of dust and things fall off it every time I roll it around. I decided to build a small drawer so there was some dust-free storage, and then the box has a lip around the top for additional stuff that won't go sliding around anymore. I just quickly threw this together with some scrap wood, glue, and brad nails. And of course, the drawer pole is made of unnecessary walnut. The only slight challenge was that I wanted to avoid drilling holes in the frame, so I had to attach it without actually attaching it. I ended up making a small frame around the shelf that friction fit against the inside of the metal legs. Then I attached the drawer box to that. It might not survive an earthquake, but it'll be more than enough to roll around the shop without falling. So I mentioned before that I've only used pre-cut jet branded sandpaper on this machine. It was okay, but regardless of grit, it always tended to get loaded up with dust and eventually caused burn lines to form. I found that the only way I could really use it was to rub a sandpaper eraser over it after every single pass. That is definitely not efficient. So at this time, I bought a roll of zirconia 80 grit paper from Klingspore Woodworking. I had to use an old pre-cut chunk as a template to get the size and angle cut right on this one, but once I put it to work, the difference was remarkable. I've taken much deeper passes with it now than I ever did before, and I have yet to clog it up enough to cause a burn. I only use the eraser once or twice to the whole workpiece, and that's more out of habit than necessity. 
I managed to get a short-term discount code at Klingspore for anyone who wants to up their drum sander game. You can get 10% off 3-inch wide rolls or conveyor belts when you spend $50 or more. Just follow the link in the description and use code GUNFLINT10. And that's it! I know, it's a rather abrupt ending, but the thing is restored to better than its original glory now, so what more do you want? Okay fine, let's just answer the title question. Does your shop need a drum sander? That really depends on what you do in your shop. I know people who don't have them, and I know people who full on hate them. I also know people who couldn't do their jobs without a drum sander. For me, like I said, I use it all the time. Sometimes I use it as a last pass in my planing process because it cleans up any tear out that results from a dull planer blade or crazy grain. I also use it in place of the planer when flattening a board that's too wide. It obviously takes longer, but with that cantilever design, I can essentially plane boards up to 32 inches wide. And in that same vein, it also helps to true up the surfaces of face frames, picture frames, or anything of that nature that might have come out of flush during glue ups. I also still use it on the occasional end grain cutting board. Now I use my CNC machine to flatten it, but that can sometimes leave an imperfect surface that I will then sand through 220 grit on the drum sander. I still have to use an orbital sander to finish it up, but this makes things go much faster. I also like using it when making really thin stock. The planer is a brute of a tool, and it sometimes likes to destroy materials that it thinks are too thin. The drum sander is much more delicate, and you can finesse your thin stock into whatever final thickness you need. That's it for real this time. I hope this video gave you some useful information. Make sure you check out the description for the link to some killer sandpaper, and look through my list of other discount codes while you're there as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll talk at you again next time. <laughs>